Uh, I'm Federico, uh, and I'm a game designer. Uh, and today I want to talk to you about how games can become myths. And I want to talk to you uh, about that, uh, telling you a story about a particular game and some other particular games. So everything started, uh, I, w I like to start with a uh, quote, actually, uh, by Robin Haneke. She's a role model of mine. She's a game designer and a game scholar. And she told once that game mechanics are religion, which is like pretty uh, important for, for, for that talk. Uh, they are physics and they are biology. The idea is that uh, game mechanics makes meaning and meaning makes a message inside the game. So everything started here. Uh, March 4, 2011, at the Game Developer Conference in San Francisco. Actually, the photo is from 20, 2012, but it was like perfect for, for the talk. So yeah, uh, I, think, I think it's really true. Um, <laughs> so uh, what happened here? Uh, there was this uh, game design challenge. It's a talk, uh, uh, was a series of talk held at the Game Developer Conference by Eric Zimmerman who is a scholar and a game designer as well. Um, so the talks were uh, about inviting like uh, six uh, uh, different game designers, giving them a theme, a very important theme about, about games that can change the world, and have them design a game about that. So the theme that year was uh, bigger than Jesus, games as, as religion. And the winner was, uh, spoiler, Jason Rohrer. Jason Rohrer, uh, uh, anyone is familiar with this game designer? He designed Passage uh, and a lot of other games. You should look, look into his games because he's really, really wholesome. Uh, incidentally, Jason is also an atheist, so he didn't really know how to deal with religion. And what he thought was like, well, religion for me, uh, that I'm an atheist, is like uh, we become like gods for those who come after us. So he came up with this game, it's called Chain World. And what he did, it was like he bought this pen drive uh, and he customized it in a way uh, just to resemble an ancient artifact of some sort. And he put inside the pen drive a modified version of Minecraft. And what he did was like this commandment, uh, which are about how it are actually the rules of the game. So how you play the game, you just, you just uh, play one single uh, game of Chain World, and then you wait for a spawn. You do whatever you want in the, in the uh, Minecraft instance uh, until you die. And then when you respawn, just allow the world to save, take the USB stick back, pass to another player, and you never play again. You never talk about what you did inside the game. So you create your own traces inside the game for other people to see, which is uh, actually about how you create a ritual space, I guess. Uh, so you create some, some sort of space for people to communicate with each other. And that leads me to the first interlude, uh, which is about Dead Bolt by Elizabeth Sampat. Don't know if any one of you have played this game. It's really difficult to play because you can, you can play the game only if you are in the same room with the game designer herself. So the game is a board game, and it's about being locked inside, literally locked inside a room uh, with other players, with other people, and you can't talk at all except when, you, it's your turn. when it's your turn, you have something that you have to do written on a, on a card, and you just go to another player and just whisper to, to them uh, a secret or something about yourself. And this is a sort of way to create intimacy and to create a shared space where you share secrets uh, and emotions about yourself. And, and uh, with a very simple rule, uh, she managed to create this same sort of ritual space, which has a lot to do uh, with, with religion and prayer. And I think it's uh, kind of, you can compare with, with, the, with the idea that Jason Rohrer had, because it's something very intimate and something very powerful that you're doing inside the game space for other people. Uh, so let, let, let's keep going on. So the second player was chosen after Jason won at the Game Developer Conference was this guy, G.I.G who is a developer and entrepreneur, and at the time he was running a website, a charity website. So he was like doing charity for game, uh, with games 
uh, for uh, uh, you know uh, places in uh, in in China for help people uh, in China. So he came up with this idea, and he selected two uh, game designers to be the fourth and the sixth player. They were Jane McGonigal and Will Wright. But what about player three and five? Player three and five would have been chosen to, uh, with an auction. Basically, he put uh, the uh, chance to be player three and five on eBay, uh, and he wa wanted to devolve everything for, for charity. Uh, and that very day, uh, when he announced the thing, uh, another game developer, Darius Kazemi, was very critical about it. Uh, he started to, to talk, yeah, that, that's an aesthetic assassination of the game, because we are, what you're doing is like, it's not in the rules, and you are changing all the, the whole idea of the game. And it was kind of right, I think. Because, you know, um, what happened here uh, is that you, uh, GIG added, uh, I think in good faith, but he did it, uh, an element of transaction inside the game. So it was a game that had no sort of like values or nothing was measured in any way. So he introduced in some way a capitalistic element. And this element, naturally creates hierarchies because that way you it's not uh, you, you can't play if you don't have money basically the, the, the idea is that so it, it creates hierarchy because the only people who actually can play the game are people that have money and also what happened it's like it was uh, something that it could have been very interesting for a particular anthropologist uh, name was Marcel Moss Moss wrote a very interesting essay about the significance of gift. When you give a gift to someone else, you don't give a gift in a completely uninterested way. Gift always carries on some sort of power that Moss called mana, and it's like uh, some sort of obligation of giving something in return. So what had happened here, if, if I just chose who the next player is based on uh, a person that I like and that I want to play the game after me. What I'm doing is I'm investing that person of a special power, the, the power of like going on with the game, and them will be invested of this responsibility and, and play the game in a different way than if they have just both a spot inside the game. So it kind of spoiled everything. And uh, Jason Rohr and himself tweet about uh, a biblical episode of Jesus uh, getting off the merchants from the temple. So the idea is like you have set up a game that is about religion, that is religion. And then what happened is the secularization of religion, the, introduce, the, the introducing of like uh, a, an economical aspect inside religion that spoiled religion of the, that very mystical value. So uh, the player that, the, the person that won the auction eventually, uh, name was Position of Supergo, <laughs> and we don't still know exactly who she is. She claims to be a woman from a big city in the USA, uh, and she claimed to wanting to restore a sense of mystery to the whole thing. So supposedly, she wasn't about to give uh, the, the, the pen drive to Jane McGonigal next, but something else happened, and we will see it in a moment. Now I have uh, another interlude, which is about Train by Brand Romero. Uh, anyone has played Train? Heard about Train? Or oh, someone has played Train? Heard about Train? Yeah. yeah, OK. So you know basically what it's about. Uh, I'll go very quickly around it. It's like, uh, this game is a uh, board game where you have to carry out this train with uh, these yellow pawns across the, uh, the tracks. And then you, you have a card that you have to uh, to, to draw, and the card has the name of a concentration camp, and the game is about the Holocaust. So I spoiled for you all, but yeah, uh, it's uh, uh, the, 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 the important part here is uh, this same idea of the gift and of the power of the ritual inside the game, because when you start the game, you have to literally break the glass in that window, and then you start playing, and everything really screams Holocaust in this game, even though it's not, it's not said, and 
a lot of people don't know what are uh, what is the, the 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 topic of the game, uh, but they slowly realize. Uh, and what's really interesting is the uh, victory condition of the game. This is training is over when it ends, which leaves the player the idea of uh, taking responsibility about how to play this thing. And it's uh, all as much interesting as if you think about uh, all the people that gather around the table and they are not playing. They are, uh, they are actually playing. They are actually inside the magic circle because they are. Uh, they are part of the narration and they can, since the game is over when it ends, they can intervene and they can stop the game. I don't know if it ever happened in a, in a, uh, in a match of, of, of train, but it's really interesting how everything, every single detail, it's completely deliberate and it's really, really a masterpiece of game design because uh, everything is so, every small detail is so deliberate and so uh, plays around delivering the message uh, uh, and so, so interesting. But we can go back to uh, our chain word uh, and we translate to late spring 2011. Somewhere in Hawaii, GIG is uh, roaming around places in Hawaii and posting video on YouTube. And the, the story of the game culminates with him uh, going besides a volcano in Hawaii and telling, posting this YouTube video which is not available anymore. Uh, but it's like, he was like, okay, this game uh, has become a burden to me, it's too much, and I just throw the pen drive inside the volcano. And he threw the pen drive inside the volcano, and no one knows if he actually did that, because it's really difficult to say, or if the game is still somewhere else. But the fact is, we don't know where Chain Words ended up. So it's really fascinating and kind of legendary story in itself. And that leads me uh, to the last interlude, which is about Glitch Hiker by Flambert, which is about games that have uh, a magic circle that is not always open for everyone. Uh, this game was made for a game jam, and the idea was that every time a player plays the game and loses, the game starts glitching until it's, it becomes eventually not playable anymore. And the game lasts, I think, 12 hours before it went to shit and nobody co could play it anymore. So this is a, a way that game can become myths or legends, just closing the magic circle and have just some few players, some people, just few people having played it and, and they can tell you the story about the game. So yeah, basically, uh, that's that that's pretty much it what i want to add is like uh the probably two most important scholars about game studies Johan Hoizinga and Roger Kelwa had the same idea of game games being things that are unproductive and that have no effects on the real world well there are some things that kind of trickle in the real world and i i pretty much prefer the vision of Gregory Bateson Bettison was, uh, uh, this, this quote is kind of enigmatic. The idea that the action of play are related or the not other action of not play, it's kind of difficult to grasp, but if you think about animals playing, when they bite themselves, they are meta-communicating, I'm biting you, but I'm not really biting you, I'm not fighting with you. We are just doing something that serves us to survive in the real world. And that's how games have a reflection in the, in the actual life. So uh, that's it. I would have also a video, but since tonight <laughs> we, 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 we are not very lucky with videos, I just tell you about it. Uh, and it's about one last game uh, that has actually no name. It's a game that was presented at the maze in Berlin uh, this, uh, just this year. Uh, and it was a, a sort of circular pong for four players. Uh, and the ball in the game leaves a trail. And the last point, uh, the ball leaves a trail, and the trail that leaves is printed like a symbol. And four crazy people got that symbol tattoos, tattooed on their wrists. So, so much for not having an, an uh, uh, actual 
uh, repercussion on real life. These people are linked forever with their tattoos. They have shared an experience and they have perpetuated that forever. So that's, I think, it's really interesting. So thank you very much. These are all my <laughs> things. You want to write anything?